what we're basically dealing with this week on the stream is a big problem. F1 is apparently doomed. I didn't mean to pick on anybody, but I actually did pull up this clip. It was basically representative of a lot of headlines that I've been seeing lately and a lot of stories that I've been hearing about. So let's have a listen to what they're talking about. Essentially, they're talking about Formula One adding more and more and more races. That What's being posited is that they're trying to grab some cash before the Formula One uh, popularity globally falls after the amazing peak of Drive to Survive. Let's take a listen. You could argue that the the boom that we went through with Drive to Survive, there was clearly like a, a hockey sticks mm. style effect. <laughs> I think it's very, very fair to argue and very easy to argue that at the very least that's tailing off at the moment. It might already be kind of tailing off. And I think it's tailing off from a very, very high point. But I think we've already started to see, you know, if you look at, if you actually dive into ratings at the moment, you know, across the, across, uh, across the globe, they're really kind of dropping. And I mm. think that that's, again, that's down to the season we're having. But I think that the kind of, a lot of people don't maybe think that what Netflix sold them is what they're now seeing on TV. The season that we're having and what they see in Drive to Survive, which I thought was an interesting way to frame that. I guess the suggestion is everyone's watching Drive to Survive, but that presents a sort of homogenized, sanitized, heightened version of Formula One, which of course it does. That's what it's for. That's what its job is. Uh, it's not a bad thing that it does that. But the season that we're having... Been hearing this a lot, and I should point out, not to pick on Nate, Nate Saunders there, I hear it a lot from British media, British Formula One media. So he said also, uh, Formula One TV rating figures from around the globe. I don't have TV rating figures from around the globe, but I'll, I'll dive into some figures in a sec. F1 News, Miami GP viewership dropped significantly from 2021 amid worries of popularity plateau in the US. F1 popularity has experienced a surge in recent years, especially in the United States, partly due to the success of Netflix's drive to survive. Recognizing the growing interest in the sport, sports channel ESPN secured a new broadcasting contract for Formula One last year. In the past, the channel has paid $5 million per season for these broadcasting rights. However, in the new agreement, ESPN now pays a whopping $90 million annually for Formula One. Wow, I guess this is a big moment. I should care about it. The Miami race, a highly anticipated event, was aired on ABC, reaching a vast audience. Last year's race on ABC attracted a record-breaking viewership of 2.6 million people, the highest number for a live F1 broadcast in the United States. However, this year's broadcast witnessed a significant drop in viewership. ABC experienced a staggering 25% decline in its audience compared to the previous season. A closer analysis of the viewership data reveals that while the viewership in major cities declined, there is actually a growing interest in Formula One in more rural areas. States such as North Carolina, renowned for its association with NASCAR and Oklahoma, have seen an increase in F1 viewership. It is There's something interesting going on in the US, I have noticed, looking into some of this, is that the, the TV viewership for NASCAR seems to be declining. I don't know what that's about, but just saying. The last note from this one. It is worth noting that although the... Broadcasting views were lower. The number of visitors to the Miami Grand Prix increased from 240,000 in 2022 to 270,000 in 2023. So holy crap, that paints a pretty bleak picture. 25% decline, despite what ESPN is paying for Formula One, going from 5 million to 90 million. They must be spewing. So aren't they supposed to be like really smart? And isn't sport what they mainly do? But we should dive into the numbers. F1's Canadian GP watched by 1.76 million viewers on ABC. Disney-owned ABC attracted an average audience of 1.76 million viewers during the last weekend's Formula One Canadian Grand Prix. Viewership represents fourth largest live US audience ever for a Formula One race. Three of the four largest US audiences have occurred during the 2023 season. Now, can you guess which one? The fourth one is the fourth largest U.S. audience. Three of the top four occurred this year. The Miami Grand Prix in 2022 posted the largest live U.S. audience in history with an average of 2.6 million viewers. So remember, that's the one that declined by 25%. So they're coming off the highest possible ratings for a Formula One race in America. Formula One continues to post solid ratings in the U.S. despite a pedestrian season, which highlights the potential room for further growth once more exciting racing is on show. After nine races, Formula One is averaging 1.28 million viewers across ABC and ESPN, up from last year's record of 1.21 million. That's an average 
Well, more people are tuning in for the Canadian race. If anything, fewer people tuned in for the Miami Grand Prix. So it's not just that they are cherry picking specific races or specific times to look at these numbers. This is an average across the season so far. And so far, the average number is up. We haven't had the race in Austin yet. We haven't had the Las, the Las Vegas Grand Prix yet. And this even says, despite the pedestrian season that we're having, I really think that this is kind of the key to this whole story. It really blows everything really open. Unfortunately, I feel the biggest factor that explains pretty much all of this is the fact that we've got Max Verstappen winning everything. And not just that he's winning everything, but who he is. And I've made a great point of calling out when the UK-based media, Sky Sports or whoever, goes out of their way to proselytize and eulogize Lewis Hamilton all the time, whether he's winning or not. And you might have noticed during uh, the eight years of Mercedes dominance, where Lewis Hamilton won quite a lot of races and championships, we didn't really hear too many calls then about how boring Formula One was or um, you know, how doomed the sport was and how things had to change or this huge investment that Formula One is making was at risk. And I mean, we heard it from the fans. We heard how they wanted better racing. From the fans, we heard it, but never from the media. From the media, it was always like, we're seeing the master put on a masterclass and showing the rest of the field his dominance. And we are really living through his era and we should savor every win and every positive moment. Now, I like Lewis Hamilton. I mean, he's, he's grown into a more likable person. I didn't like that he was so dominant and won so much. And I've always said that. I don't like Max Verstappen really much at all. And I don't like that he's so dominant. I didn't like that Sebastian Vettel was so dominant. I didn't like when Michael Schumacher was so dominant. I think that we will see a big uplift, of course, when we have better racing, when we have more competition. That's what everyone is desperate for. I understand. But when you say comments like, Formula One, it's on the tail of this popularity and it's on the way down. It's about to kind of nosedive, even though it's starting from a high place, it's starting to tip down. Number one, the numbers just don't reflect that. But number two, it feels like the British media is really trying to generate this narrative of, we've got to change things. This is unbearable. You hear people like human headline, Eddie Jordan, saying, you know, I'm sick to death of watching Verstappen win. And it's like, wow, well, were you sick to death of Hamilton winning? I don't remember you saying anything too much like that. Or if you did, it was always like, well, hey, it's a shame how Hamilton wins everything, isn't it? But oh, well. So unfortunately, blowing the doors off this theory that Formula One is doomed, this seems to be mostly Lewis Hamilton cope on display. When the UK media primes Formula One fans for Lewis Hamilton performance, and they say things like, Lewis, I love you and respect you. The problem is that when he doesn't perform, they go, ah, Formula One sucks. It's just rubbish now. When the fact is it's not that different than it was four years ago. I also should point out the Athletic had a great breakdown of Drive to Survive viewing figures. And they had uh, not all of the viewing figures from Netflix on Drive to Survive, but the first week of figures. And they showed how it had grown uh, in the first week, people watching the show in the first week. And it had increased this year about 50% on the viewing figures from last year. Obviously last year, a hugely controversial series uh, dealing with the fallout from 2021. But I mean, the fact remains that more people than ever are watching that series. And I've, I'm, I'm not over the moon with it. I'm not loving it. <laughs> I don't really watch it anymore at all. But people are watching it. People are tuning in. And it seems like at least in America... People are watching the races too. And I call that during those articles as well. People are attending the races. We are setting records everywhere. More people than ever are going to the races and plenty of people are watching Drive to Survive and a whole chunk of them are tuning in for the races. So there you have it. I've been sitting on that story for a few weeks. A story. I was just talking, reading stuff. Unbelievable. Who do I think I am? <laughs>